Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and if you're new to this series, we built this five acre pond over the past year, and it took us several months to get all of the dirt excavated, and we had to bring in several truckloads of clay, and we also built an island, a dock, and got all the structure in place, and then it took a couple of months to get it full of water. After that, we stocked it with a bunch of bait fish, including bluegills and threadfin shad, and not long after that, we stocked it with these little two inch aggressive bass. And we're going to be giving you an update on them here in just a minute and showing you how big they've gotten. But before we get into that, the world's most aggressive bass, Moby, can hardly be contained in the 300 gallon aquarium. He is a beast and needs a bigger place to swim around. So we're going to be moving him into our backyard pond. And we recently moved our other two pet bass, Bonnie and Clyde, to the new five acre pond out at the farm. We added some pit tags so we could track them in the future and released them and happy to say they're doing great. But of all the fish I've ever owned, Moby stands out at the top and is truly a fascinating fish. But to fully understand the life of Moby, I'll have to take you back to where it all began. So Liz and I drove miles and miles up a river system and into the back of one of the swampiest areas on the river, which would be home to Moby. And Moby's aggression was on full display from the moment we met him as he was trying to eat a fish the same size as him. Lost him. Yeah, he got it. It's my, it's my, oh, no, what did I get? Oh, I caught a little bass. Look at that. I thought I missed him. Look at this. That size minnow, that is incredible right there. So we brought Moby home to our 50 gallon planted aquarium that also had several other tropical fish and it didn't take long before Moby was the last fish left in the tank. He had an appetite unlike any other fish I've ever seen and regardless of how much you fed him, he was always hungry. And Moby ate so much that we had to stock his own bait tank nearby to keep up with his appetite. And we'd like to see just how far Moby would go for his next meal. So we would often hold food above the aquarium and watch him jump and grab it out of the air. Until one day, he bounced off the side of the aquarium and landed on the floor. So we were worried about the little guy until we put him back in the aquarium and he immediately started chasing a bait fish around. That's when we knew we had a special aggressive fish. There wasn't a cricket, worm, minnow, or even red dot that Moby wasn't interested in eating. And even at an early age, we started testing new species like crawfish. And with that kind of appetite, it didn't take long for him to outgrow the 50 gallon aquarium. So we moved him to a new home in the 300 gallon aquarium and it came as no surprise that he immediately ate every bait fish in that tank. And even though we had a much bigger bluegill in the aquarium, in Moby's eyes, he was the bigger fish and was always interested in a stare down and ready to fight over the next meal. And over the years, we continued feeding him a wide variety of food, including crawfish and just about any other type of food we could get our hands on. I literally can't put my hand up here without him smashing it. I hate sticking my thumb down in there every time. <laughs> That is insane. <laughs> Moby, you are too much, buddy. You are way too much. And over the course of two years and many meals later, Moby's finally outgrown this tank and is ready to make a move to the backyard pond. Now, before we move Moby into the pond, I got a couple things I want to do. The first thing is stock it with a bunch of bait fish because obviously we want him to enjoy his new home and actually see how much he'll eat. And the second thing we're going to do is give the pond a good spring cleaning because to get in there and really remove all the algae and things that build up over the years, you have to lower the water levels and do a lot of cleaning and sometimes that can stress the fish. So now's a perfect time, since none of our bass are currently in here, to give it a good cleaning. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is vacuuming. It's a pretty cool pond pump back, just suction in all the algae and water. It spits it out of that tube and we'll run that to the drain back over there on the back side. And all right, it's time to go swimming with the fishies. Lots of bait in here. All right, so the way the pond vacs work is you suck in all the dirt and debris up off the pond bottom and it goes into there. And as soon as that gets full, it shuts off and then drains out of that other pipe. You can see that little dome right there. That's our drain. And so I've just got the water hose pumping fresh water in here so we can keep on suctioning in water and dirt and giving this pond a good cleaning. So we brought Jekyll out to the farm, but his counterpart Hyde is down here and it looks like she's making a bluegill bed. I'm 
been scooping a lot of these guys out of the pond. You know what that means. It's toad mating season. <laughs> Look at what just blew into the pond while I was standing right there in the deep end. A snake shed. Definitely not something you want to see while you're standing in water. Hopefully that's a land snake. All right, the next thing we're going to do is use a sump pump. And basically, we're going to drop that down in the bottom of the pond and then use this net to kind of stir up everything that's left. and It'll suck it up right over there to the drain. And that should work out great. Look how dirty that water is. Just stirred everything up. All right, I got the waterfall shut off to clean it out. And it's always interesting to come up here. You see different types of growth, even snails and things of that nature. That's the crazy thing about these aquascape ecosystems. Life is abundant everywhere. And today's video is brought to you by Factor. And for those of you that have watched my channel over the past several years, you know how much I love to cook. But I have to admit, when you have those busy days where you're spending all your time on projects, there's nothing better than coming home to a pre-cooked, healthy meal. But the first thing that impressed me about Factor is their meal selections, because they have a lot of the types of food I like to eat. Steak, chicken, fish, vegetables. But one thing I really like is they typically add some sort of sauce or different cheeses and will sometimes even spice it up. And Factor even offers meals for different types of diets, including keto, low calorie, or vegetarian. And they have over 27 different meal options each week. And a typical meal plan will range from four to 18 meals per week. And you can even add or reduce that number based on your specific needs. And one of the best parts is there's no prep work or mess to clean up. And since the meals aren't frozen, all you have to do is spend about two minutes heating them up and it's time to eat. So if you're interested in checking them out, either click the link in my video description or head over to go.factor75.com and use my code POGBAMAJUNE40 for 40% off your first box and 20% off the next month. And for a little added bonus, they also send out smoothies or keto shakes, which are a perfect little snack for days out here at the pond. Gotta love it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is stock the pond full of bait fish. We're gonna add 1,000 golden shiners, and that may be a mistake because Moby may try to eat every one of them, but he definitely deserves a pond full of shiners. All right, it was a cool night last night. The water temp got down to 72, which is perfect. You can see all the bait swimming around in the pond there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is section off this side of the pond for Moby. It's gonna be stressful enough with him having to go into the pond. I don't wanna add extra stress from the other fish. So I'm gonna take this divider here, basically just get it set up right here in the center. So he'll have his own little part of the pond. All right, Moby, today's your big day. That's gonna be the tough part is catching him and getting him out of the aquarium. I'm gonna take all the lids off. He's a fighter. Moby weighs just over three pounds, 3.04 pounds. All right, buddy, enjoy your new home. Stocked, slam full of golden shiners. We'll know everything's good whenever he starts eating. So I'm gonna keep some GoPros in there and keep an eye on him throughout the day. So Moby acclimated as good, if not better, than all of our other fish. Typically, there's a little bit of shock when you first put them in a new body of water, especially the older they get. But Moby didn't seem to mind at all. One of the other bluegills actually got over here into his side of the pond. And he seemed pretty interested at first, but I can tell just by knowing Moby that he sees that fish as a competitor for food. Moby checking out the turtle, and it's pretty cool to think that this is the first time that Moby's probably ever seen a turtle. So although I hadn't captured it on camera, I can definitely tell that Moby's been eating some of the shiners. So next week, I'm going to try to get a live camera in here that captures them 24-7, and then we're also going to introduce him to the other fish and see how he reacts. And in our last video, we treated our pond for algae. You can see the growth here, and this is what it looked like a couple of weeks ago, and happy to say that I think the treatment's working. You can see that a lot of the algae's busted up and turning that bright yellow color, which means it's dying off. But we treated it with a beneficial bacteria, and basically how it works is it competes with the algae and starves it out. 
and it is a slow process. We were told it may take two weeks before we saw any results. But we have started seeing them, and what I decided to do was apply it in two different treatments. We put the first treatment in two weeks ago, and we're going to put the second one in today. And the only reason for that is sometimes if you kill all the algae in a pond off at once, you can create other problems like low oxygen. So before I did the second treatment today, I did a dissolved oxygen test. And this kit includes a small cup that you fill full of pond water. And you break the top glass piece here and let it mix in with what's inside. And then just measure the shade of blue to tell you how many parts per million. And we're looking roughly around six parts per million, which is pretty good. But here's another up close look at that algae. You can see that yellowish look and it kind of even looks like it's starting to dissolve. So we're going to go ahead and add the rest of the sacks. And one other interesting thing is that our water is darkening up. So we had around 36 inches of visibility, but after talking to the biologist, he thinks that maybe as some of this algae is dying off, it's releasing some of those nutrients and helping create the plankton bloom. Now the one other thing we're doing to help with algae is add tilapia. We got some of those added in this week, but we're going to be showing you that in the next video. So last week I installed what I call the duck feeder cam because now that all of our baby ducks have grown up and have moved over to the pond, we're still feeding them right here on the bank. So let's see what stopped by to eat some of the duck food. The possum that we call George Jones. And at first I couldn't tell if this was the eagle or a buzzard, but when he popped that red head up, it was easy to spot him. And a little bunny rabbit <laughs> actually hopped in the bowl. And this is a big cat. I couldn't tell initially if it was a bobcat or a regular house cat. I'm kind of leaning towards a house cat, but it does have some long legs. And the bunny rabbit got spooked by something. And the duck cam captured a nice sunrise. And Peter Cottontail's back, but if you look closely in the background, you'll see one of those pesky blue herons. <laughs> you never know what you're going to see out in the wild. The heron sitting on top of the duck house. And the bandit raccoon eating some of that duck food. But here lately I've noticed the ducks standing up for themselves. You can see here they're fighting off a crow. And the other day we had an osprey trying to snag a fish down in the pond. And the ducks came over quick and were quacking at him. Basically claiming it as their turf. And you can see the ducks have even started hanging out in the prawn pond. And I finally found where one of the females has been laying her eggs. She picked a pretty good spot because I almost ran over it while I was cutting grass. And Tate the turtle stretching his legs. And there's also been an interesting pair of birds flying around the pond. They have white bodies, black wings, and yellow feet. Never seen any birds quite like them, but if you know what they are, leave a comment down below. And speaking of birds, we finally had a pair of seagulls show up to the pond. And that's not too surprising because they are in this area. But they're just hanging out here on the duck house. It's the one year anniversary of when we stocked the bass last June. The one year mark is one of those important time frames that you want to measure the bass's growth. So we're going to catch a few more today and then look at a detailed analysis of their growth rates over the past 12 months. All right, time for one of my favorite parts of the series. We're gonna do a little fishing and tag some bass. And if you're new to this, each time we catch a fish, the first thing we do is scan it to see if we've already tagged it in the past. And if we hadn't, we'll insert a new pit tag into it. And today we're gonna to be throwing some shad style baits. These fish are ranging from a pound to two pounds. So smaller style, got a little spinners on the bottom to add a little flash to it. Got him. They ate that one good. No tag in them. All right, this fish is 5'7", 1208. 571208. And it weighs 1.47, 1.49. All right, that's a nice one. Got him. Nice one. 
Then it came over that little bump. We popped it. They're eating this little bait good. A little bigger belly on this one. Been eating them shad. Oh, this fish has been caught before. Six nine, six three eight. That might have been where it was caught last time. It's got a little red spot right there on his mouth. All right, this one weighs one point five two pounds. All right, that's another good one. Now this fish is named Bertha, and the last time we caught her was around six months ago, and she's had pretty significant growth. And another funny thing is, she was caught in roughly the same exact spot six months ago. Got him. Oh yeah, another good one. Man, there's nothing but good fish today right here off the dock. Oh, that's a big one. Man, look at there. Got spots on the tail. All right, another fish that's been caught before, six, nine, five, six, eight. It's got an updated weight. That's a chunky one. All right, this one weighs 1.67 pounds. I'm getting close to two. And this fish is named Copper, and we actually caught and tagged him just two weeks ago, basically measuring the exact same weight. But the interesting thing about Copper is we caught him on a completely different side of the pond two weeks ago. So I went out in the boat and fished around the island, didn't have much luck. But then when I got back out here on the dock, I was catching one almost every cast and I figured out what's going on. So I've got that well running and it's basically like an air conditioner for the fish. So this pond water is about 80 degrees right now and that's pumping out water that's in the high 60s or low 70s. So that's probably drawing all the bait fish into this area and the bass are just staging right here in all these areas around the wood and other structure and probably just picking off the bait as they roll in. Got another good one by the well. It's a nice one. Got a nice green head. Got another tagged fish, 570540. All right, and this one weighs 1.54. And this fish is named Yoshi and is by far the most interesting catch of the day. So this fish was caught and tagged about 27 days before this, but look at the jump in weight. It almost gained a half a pound in 27 days. Now that's a pretty incredible growth rate for under a month and is exactly the kind of growth rates we're looking for. So these tiger bass are known for growing up to two pounds a year and sometimes even more, but that's always been one of my targets is to put on two pounds a year. And as I look down through the spreadsheet, there's several fish that were weighing in at a pound and a half with the heaviest being 1.69 pounds. So I think we're right on track. And as you can see, in these warmer summer months, they can put the pounds on quick. So I'm happy with where we're at, and I think we'll continue feeding them a heavy dose of shiners, tilapia, bluegills, and here in the next few weeks, hopefully some prawns. Look at that belly. Not the longest, but definitely the fattest one today. No tag. All right, this fish is gonna be 570651. 1.4 three pounds. I like to see them like that. That means they're eating good. Well, if you ever want to create you a fishing hot spot at your pond, just install an underground well and they're going to pile up around it in the summertime. Now we're going to be moving our smallest pet bass tiger into the 300 gallon aquarium. But before we do that, since it's empty, we're going to take the opportunity to give it a good deep cleaning and get rid of some of this algae. And if you look there on the back wall, you'll see what's called blackbeard algae. And Blackbeard can be really tough to get rid of, but I'll show you our plan that's worked in the past. The first thing we're going to do is remove the water. And while we're doing that, we're also cleaning out the substrate by using this hose that just suctions the water out and kind of lifts that gravel up and filters it out. And now that the tank's empty, we're going to do what's known in the aquarium world as a blackout. We've put a blackout cover around the entire tank. And by starving that algae of sunlight and water for about a week to two weeks, that should do the trick. So Tiger, you're about to get a big upgrade, and it's time to watch his very last feeding in the 50-gallon aquarium.
I think we got another Moby on our hands. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're stocking tilapia in the pond next week as well as giving you an underwater look at Moby in the Backyard Pond. Should be a lot of fun, but I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and we will see you all next time.